After that, pretending like you're something that you're not. He says the next bad thing is sihat ayeladim. Children's chatter. What's, what do you mean children's chatter? You need to talk to your kids. You need to talk to your kids. What's the, what's the problem with speaking to kids? He says, yes, you need to talk to kids just enough to raise them. Just enough to educate them. Just enough to be a part of their life. Nothing more, nothing less. The um, Rav Walbi said, Zechat Tzadik Zohar said, something very serious once, many times, but this one thing. He says, parents, they raise their kids like they're friends. They raise their kids and they treat their kids like they're friends with them. Don't know that they're raising little Hitlers. Eventually, those kids that you think are your friends are going to become little Hitlers. They're going to be very, very difficult kids. Why? Because your child is not supposed to be your friend. He's supposed to be your child. As soon as that Abba, son, relationship is friend, you have a problem. As soon as the mom is going to the store with her daughter to see what they're both going to buy, because they're both going to go to the movie together, and they're both going to do things together because they're BFFs, you have a problem. I'm not saying you're supposed to be enemies, but the daughter needs to know that mommy is mommy. That's ima. There's a respect. There's a certain line. I don't cross. I don't talk to mommy like I talk to my friends. I don't talk to Abba like I talk to my friends. There's a line. But if you treat your children like they're your friends, you have a serious, serious problem. But you don't know it's a problem yet. So what happens here is that when someone has this free world type of mentality where they're just careless and nonchalant behavior. They wake up when they want. They drink wine in the afternoon. They want to just live. Live life as they call it. He says those are exactly the perfect candidate that's going to spend extra time talking to kids, but not extra time educating them. Extra time becoming friends with them. And when you spend extra time becoming friends with them, this leads to a joking type of personality. Meaning that you're not going to know when to stop being a kid. You're going to start becoming a kid yourself. Start joking around at inappropriate times. And this could lead to a lot of problems. So the Gemara talks about it in a few different ways. About Leitzanim, about people that make jokes. Now, it does say that anyone that's going to teach Torah... It's a good idea. It's not a must or anything. It's not a lacha, but it's a good idea to sometimes start a serious shiur Torah with a joke. Makes the crowd more comfortable. Opens them up. I'm not very good at this. I'm not very good at jokes. Usually I'm good at jokes. I'm making fun of myself. But, uh, huh? Six weeks ago was the last joke. See, I'm not even counting how many jokes I have. I'm not good at jokes. So I have to take uh, extra notes for jokes. But uh, as far as uh, I know that there's a couple of people that I know that love to joke around. There's one guy that I know, and uh, he invited me to do a couple of shiurim. And after a couple of shiurim, I decided that I'm never doing another shiur with this person again. And the reason why is because, and I also stopped inviting him to my shiurim. And the reason why is because he doesn't stop joking around. Now, as you obviously see, I'm, I'm a kind of a serious guy. I don't really like joking around too much. Uh, especially when Gan Eden no Geyenom is on the line. So when someone is making a joke every five seconds, it's very annoying to me. Now, I didn't know at the time that this happened. This is already a few years ago that uh, the Gemara talks about this. So Rabbi Elazar says, Kol mitlotetz, yesurin bain alav. He says, whoever scuffs, whoever jokes around at appropriate times, not someone that's just a, uh, says a joke at an appropriate time, just to lighten up the mood. Someone that jokes around, let's say, in the middle of Shul Torah, you're talking to them about serious things, and he just makes fun of the uh, speaker. Says, ah, you look like this, or you do this, or just makes some type of jokes, wants the attention, wants the against, uh, t- attention of the room. Says, whoever scuffs, 
brings on himself Isurim. Isurim is afflictions. Shenemar ve'atai titlotzetzu pen yechezku mosrechem. From the verse, we learn this from a um, verse in Isaiah 28-22. So now do not scoff lest your afflictions grow severe. This is one small thing. Another one, Rabbi Ketin, Rav Ketina says, Kol mitlotet mezonotav mitma'atin. says, whoever is a scuffer, whoever is a guy that jokes around a little too much, his income diminishes, he loses money. Last month he was making 100000 a month, all of a sudden it dropped to 85000 It's not because of bad luck. It's because of that stupid joke you made in the middle of the Shield Torah. Shereimah, mashach yado et lo The verse says in... Um, uh, the prophet Ogea, chapter 7, verse 5, God withdraws his hand from the scuffers. Those people like to make jokes, he takes away their panasa. Tries to give them a wake-up call. Resh Lakish says, Kol amitlotzetz nofel begeinom. Says, the guy that makes these jokes goes to geinom. So, the question is, why all these harsh things? It's a little scary. We learned already here, Rabbi Dosa is already serious. These people are even more serious. Okay, I just made a joke. Why am I going to get home? Getting Yisurim, getting sick, losing money. Goes even worse. Rabbi Tanchum says, Bar uh, Chanchinai, says, Kol amitlotzetz gorem kilaya la'olam, whoever scuffs causes to ruin the world. It gets worse and worse in this Gemara. Rabbi Elezar ben Arkinos says, Rabbi Elizabeth ben Horkino says, it's very difficult for someone that's a uh, joker. Why? Shetchila Yisurim v'sofo kelaya. Since the beginning of his punishment is afflictions, getting difficulties in his life, but the culmination is ruin, meaning eternal genom. This is a harsh punishment for what? A joke? Come on, no? You guys are a little ultra-orthodox here. What's going on? So what's going on? says you have to know when to joke if you're just hanging out with a few guys you're hanging out you're having dinner you're having fun time you and your wife are just talking and you want to throw a joke no problem enjoy the joke laugh it's good to laugh it's healthy to laugh it's actually even scientifically proven if you actually force yourself to smile for 20 minutes in a row it improves your mood Improves your mood. It's not going to take you out of depression by any stretch of the imagination, only because depression is a spiritual state of mind. It's not a physical state of mind. But it can help you. Forcing yourself to smile for 20 minutes straight will help you. But there's a time and a place for that. If you're joking with you and your wife, you and your husband, you and a couple of friends at an appropriate time, no problem, enjoy. But if it's during a meeting with the board of directors that's considering whether they're going to declare bankruptcy tomorrow or today and you throw a joke you're not a good guy to have on the job if your wife just told you we don't have any food to feed the kids and you throw a joke you're not you're not saying it the right time if someone, Bar Minan, just said, I'm sick, I have, Chas Shalom, they have cancer, and you threw a joke, it's not the right time to throw the joke. If someone's trying to tell you the entrance, the directions to the entrance to Gan Eden, and the directions to the entrance to Geinom, he's trying to teach you which way to go, which way not to go. You follow Torah and Mitzvot, Gan Eden. You don't follow, there's only two options. There's no middle. And in the middle of him telling you, you do this, you go to Gan Eden. You do that, no good. You throw a joke. It's not the right time. Why is it not the right time? Because if we have a serious Yotoram, people are into it. People get tense. People are thinking if, if it's a good if someone's a good speaker a good rabbi people are already thinking to themselves while he's speaking what can I do to fix me 
Oh, that I can do. No, that I can't. That's too much for me. That I can do. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. That means fine. I'm gonna do that one. Tomorrow, he's already thinking to himself. Tomorrow, I'm gonna start doing it. Tomorrow, I'm gonna do feeling. Tomorrow, I'm gonna wake up early. Tomorrow, I'm gonna, he's already planning in his head. Tomorrow, he's already getting ready to fix because he's connecting to what the speaker said from read, what he read in the Torah. I'm gonna do this tomorrow. I'm getting into it. He's he's getting hot. He's excited. You throw a joke. It's like you threw cold water, water on fire. All of a sudden, he forgot about all the promises he made. All of a sudden, he's too busy laughing at the joke. All of a sudden, his chuva goes into the garbage. And tomorrow, he goes back to waking up at 12 o'clock in the afternoon. You just caused the person to not do chuva. And by getting in the way of somebody doing chuva, you ruin the world. Because the world was created for him. For him to do tshuva. The whole world. The heaven. The stars. The land. The moon. The, everything was created for him. Now he's not perfect yet. He has to perfect himself. He has to do tshuva. So the whole world was created and will culminate when he does tshuva. You just ruined it. With your stupid joke. You just ruined the world. And you expect not to get punished. So it's the right, there's a the right time, there's a the wrong time. I've heard enough new arrival screams echoing through the hallway to know that this ain't good. Once they pass them through the infierno, they don't come back. It's enough to make you go crazy. Do not think we fear you, spirit. We know your power is born of evil. This is your last night in the land of the living. You understand me, Malavan Demon? that lived here called the Hetheringtons and unfortunately their daughter passed away of a heart attack inside the house. Basically they were so devastated that they reached out to people claiming to be psychic mediums. They actually weren't psychic mediums. They opened up a total of 11 portals inside this house and invited spirits and entities from all different kinds of dimensions. Well, I think there are certain pieces of evidence that there is an afterlife. Resurrection of the dead is affirmed uh, pretty clearly uh, in the Talmud and the Midrash. To be honest with you, to give this lecture is a nightmare. If it was up to me, I wouldn't. There's going to be some graphic detail. This place is a maze. 
the person after death went to a place called Sheol. This is by far the largest near-death experience study that has ever been conducted. People go to a place and they experience weird things. And sometimes they actually will see a character of some type. Well, where did that come from? describe feeling profoundly peaceful, seeing a bright, warm, welcoming light. Some people describe watching doctors and nurses working on them with incredible accuracy. Next thing I knew, I was above my body watching the operation. How long did you feel like you were gone? I went to a place of timelessness. And so what that means, it could have been a second, it could have been five minutes. I don't know. Can you imagine waking up from your sleep and not being able to move? As I'm lying there, I realize that there's a, an evil presence next to me. Do you believe that angels, demons exist? Holy oh, get out of here! Oh my god, dude! Strange things keep happening. Bizarre nightmares, as if I'm on fire. Oh my. Whoa, what the hell is this? Man, I've got bad chest pain. Satan's Hollow is what it's called, the portal to hell. Some people calling it an eye of fire, while others said it looked like the portal to hell opening up. And the next thing I know, I was outside of my body looking at my body. What I'm going to do is called claromancy, the art of throwing lots or throwing bones. 2,000 years of experience passed down, recorded, of how demons work. God has them all on a leash, and he lets the leash go enough to let them tempt us because that's what makes us spiritually stronger. I'm trying to be as graphic as possible so you understand what we're talking about. It's your ticket to reality. It's your ticket to freedom. It's your ticket to immortality. Is there an afterlife? Is there a it's God? It's the type of information that can keep you away from the itself. What happens to us after we die?